This was a scene in Kathmandu's main square last night, a huge candlelight vigil for those who lost their lives. Nepal's prime minister is now promising to start reconstruction of heritage sites in the capital. But about 800,000 homes were destroyed in the quake, and those people, many of them, are still living in temporary shelters. Sasha Petrasik covered the quake when it happened a year ago and has returned to see Nepal one year later. When I left Nepal after last year's big earthquake, there was great hope and great plans for rebuilding with foreign donors committing more than $5 billion, including from Canada, the houses would go up quickly. Well, it hasn't worked out that way. In the middle of Kathmandu, entire neighborhoods are still made up of tents. Thousands struggle daily for the essentials of life. No, no enough to eat. So we have to sit in line to take gas also, food also, and other things also. There's been little help from government. Promises have come and gone. But there is no way. It defends uh, the year of delays. We can't build 600,000 houses within two, three months. It takes times. The government also blames a dispute with India that blocked imports. Others here point to bureaucracy, and corruption. In these streets where last year I watched bodies pulled from the rubble, there's now rebuilding for those with money. Everyone else waits for promised subsidies. For months, even NGOs haven't been allowed to start permanent reconstruction. Temporary work, including this Canadian-funded project to train masons, is the only bit of hope in the Himalaya foothills. Out of desperation, some have started rebuilding using just mud and stones from their collapsed houses. This one will collapse too, he tells me, but with monsoons coming, what else am I supposed to do? Now it looks as though the big rebuilding project may finally be underway. The government is giving NGOs the go-ahead and it has promised to hand out building grants to more than half a million families in the coming weeks. But for many, including the poorest, it's already too late to put a roof over their heads before the coming monsoons. Sasha Petrasek, CBC News, Kathmandu.